cares about the Hondurans in this situation because they just had their ambassador on a couple days ago here on Fox and he talked about admitting to the fact that uh, Mexico throws out something like 100,000 other Central Americans a year that sneak into their country. Uh, so what makes us believe that Mexico would be trying to help these people get to where they're going? Well, Mexico is, a, uh, is an asylum-granting country. They're a signatory to international conventions. But the fact is, they actually do a very effective job of enforcing their own immigration laws, but they don't do a very good job of helping us enforce our immigration laws. Andrew, the, let's just be you know, blunt here. The border wall, is, even if it were approved right now to go up, it's not going to happen overnight. So what can be done now to help solve the problem that we're facing? Well, I agree with uh, President Trump that we need to activate the National Guard. We need to have military assist our Border Patrol agents. It's important to understand the role that they play. It would primarily be a logistical role, helping to man monitors and sensors along the border, freeing up Border Patrol agents who will then be able to apprehend these individuals. But again, as we know, even if they're arrested, that doesn't mean that they're going to go right back home. Okay. Uh, you know, the president has now threatened uh, to mess with NAFTA in response to this if Mexico is indeed helping these Hondurans get to the border and, and push them across to claim amnesty here. Uh, is that a, a good threat to make? It, would that be very impactful on Mexico if their products were marginalized here in this country? Well, it'll be impactful on Mexico. Unfortunately, it's also going to be impactful on the United States. Uh, so the effectiveness of that is yet to be seen. But we do generally have a fairly good relationship with Mexico, and I think that we need to work with the Mexicans in order to ensure that they actually defend their own sovereignty so that we don't have to do uh, you know, such a job of defending our own sovereignty along the southwest border. Well, let's get your reaction to this tweet here that we'll put up on the screen from Vicente Fox. It says, to militarize the southern border is to provoke more hate and distance even further our nations. Somebody has to talk some sense into him. He's elevating his hate towards Mexico, causing a greater conflict. Do you agree that that's causing a greater conflict? No, I disagree with that completely. As you know, we've previously uh, sent troops to the border. We sent National Guard troops to the border. We've had them uh, assist in a logistical role along the border. It's not militarizing the border. It's simply asserting our national sovereignty. It's the right of every nation. It's the right of Mexico, and it's the right of the United States. And President Fox knows that. Mm -hmm. Whether to file a legal brief supporting the Trump administration's lawsuit against the state of California, San Diego County's Board of Supervisors will discuss the same movement later this month. At least one county and three cities have already taken action against California's sanctuary policies, which limits police cooperation with ICE. North Carolina sheriff outraged after county officials demand more law enforcement training. It comes after body cam footage was released of an officer punching a man during a confrontation after he allegedly jaywalked. That officer, charged with felony assault, resigned in January. Buncombe County Sheriff Jack Van Duncan is firing back, calling the demands for stricter training a, quote, slap in the face and an effort to drive an anti-law enforcement agenda. All right, there's soon to be a relic, but if you still have unused Toys R Us gift cards, there's at least one other store where you can make use of them, but you have to hurry. Jeez, Tracy Crosco from our sister network, Fox Business, here with where you can cash in. Where's this, Tracy? Good morning. So Bed Bath & Beyond will uh -huh. let you use up your Toys R Us or Babies R Us gift cards through tomorrow. So if you go to Bed Bath & Beyond's website, uh, they've got it all set up there, and then you'll get an E gift card from Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, the uh, exchange rate isn't exactly the same, um, so you you won't get the same dollar amount for your Toys R Us gift card. Uh, you'll, if you have a $100 gift card, you get about $64 from Bed Bath oh. & Beyond. Hey, but it's better than nothing yeah. because Toys R Us, they've shut down their website already, and you're only going to be able to use Toys R Us or Babies R Us gift cards through April 21st. Wow. So take advantage of that if you have any gift cards. What's Bed Bath & Beyond going to do with them? That's the big question. Are they owned by the same parent company? Or? No, I think there's some sort yeah. of exchange. Um, there's oh, okay. an online gift card marketplace that they can exchange all, all right. that. Huh. So, okay. All right, Tracy, we talked about some plans <laughs> to go to Applebee's for drinks one day soon, and now we can go for, like, super cheap. Now we have a reason. The Dollarita is back at <laughs> Applebee's. One dollar margaritas through the month of April. Applebee's says that it is to celebrate the return of spring, although here in New York City, not so sure about that. But, hey, one dollar <laughs> drinks can't beat that. Love it. So if you want to see Tracy, Carly, and Jillian trashed at, like, 10 a.m. on a Friday, You're uh, not gonna come with us? the Applebee's and Times. 
Times Square sometime in the next few weeks. Is there goes that plan. Get. No, for real. We're going to do it. Oh, my God. That's going to be great. <laughs> we're going to drag you and along. Gonna, and we're going to see the pictures. Absolutely. Right. Okay. It is 25 minutes after the hour. President Trump's approval rating hitting a high note, but not if you ask the left. Yeah. The president saying he'll decide very quickly whether to bring them home. Yeah, but some are warning that their mission to defeat ISIS is not finished. Todd Pyro joins us now with what could come next. Hey, Todd. Hey, Rob. Hey, Jillian. Good morning to both of you. The president pulling no punches on what he thinks of U.S. involvement in the war-torn nation. Take a listen. I want to get out. I want to bring our troops back home. I want to start rebuilding our nation. We will have, as of three months ago, seven trillion dollars in the Middle East over the last 17 years. We have nothing, nothing except death and destruction. It's a horrible thing. President Trump proclaiming that our primary mission in Syria was to defeat ISIS and that we've almost completed that task. But a decision to withdraw would conflict with the president's top advisors. According to officials, President Trump's entire national security team, including CIA Chief Mike Pompeo, who has been nominated to be the next Secretary of State, strongly advise against a hasty withdrawal from Syria. And a senior Syrian Kurdish official said a withdrawal would clear the way for, quote, total chaos in Syria. Area, endangering areas newly liberated from ISIS and empowering Turkey to move in. Also, many have warned that a premature U.S. withdrawal would cede the country to Iran and Russia, but the president remains steadfast. He is not giving in to Vladimir Putin. Nobody has been tougher on Russia, but getting along with Russia would be a good thing, not a bad thing. And just about everybody agrees to that, except very stupid people. Okay. The president has asked Saudi Arabia to contribute $4 billion for reconstruction in Syria as part of his effort to get other countries to pay for things so the U.S. isn't always on the hook. Still waiting to hear back from the Saudis. Robin Jillian? Such a complicated little corner <laughs> that, of the world. So the many different word. hands in this thing. 100%. Try to keep it all together. All right. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you. If you live in the Washington, D.C. area, listen up. The government warning some cell phones in that area are being spied on. Homeland Security discovered unauthorized surveillance devices similar to this one. They can detect a phone's location and eavesdrop on calls. The problem is they don't know how many there are, where they're located, or who is listening on the other end. The department is investigating if foreign governments are involved. All right, supporting Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election is costing Planned Parenthood some money. The Federal Election Commission fining a Wisconsin branch nearly $6,000 for failing to accurately report thousands of dollars in donations to Clinton and former Senator uh, Russ Feingold. In fact, both candidates lost their elections in 2016. Planned Parenthood claims that the error was due to a filing mistake. Two cities are going above and beyond to give their police officers top-notch protection. Superior and Madison, Wisconsin are downsizing their armored military vehicles they currently use, like the one you see here, to better serve their cities. The ones they currently use from the Defense Department are too large to properly maintain. Officials say the smaller vehicles can withstand attacks from improvised explosive devices. All right, today marks the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's assassination, and since then, his message continues to live on, especially through his family. His niece, Alveda King, joined us earlier, telling us how she honors her uncle. He talked about we must learn to live together as brothers, and I will add as sisters, or perish together as fools. They taught Acts 1726, of one blood God made all people to live together on the face of the earth. And so if we are going to be one human race, one blood, then we can certainly live together as brothers and sisters and stop all of the violence and the strife. Well, thousands of people are expected to gather in Memphis, Tennessee today to honor the iconic civil rights leader. President Trump's approval rating climbing higher than his predecessor at this same point into his presidency. But that's not the narrative you'll hear from the left. Today in the White House, we have perhaps the worst and most dangerous president. This president is the worst that I've ever Seen. The worst president in the history. The worst president ever in the minds of the experts. Drum roll, please, is yes, Donald J. Trump. All right, so what will it take for the president to get Democrats and the mainstream media 
on board. Joining us now is GOP strategist Ned Ryan. Ned, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Um, we good want to, to clarify something real quick. Yeah, good, uh, good to have you here. Um, you know, there are other polls here that don't have the president as high that have him below what uh, Obama was at this same point. This is a Rasmussen poll that puts him at about 50 percent. But one thing all the polls do have in common is that he is moving in the right direction. He has made some strides here in the last couple of months. What do you think he's doing right and how can he push that forward and, and get uh, a more of a mainstream approval? Well, I, I think there's a couple things to point out too, Rob, as well. Let's not forget Rasmussen was one of the more accurate polls in 2016. So I look at this as a fairly legitimate poll, the fact that he's gotten to 50%. I think the thing that's interesting too about this whole mainstream narrative that you know Donald Trump hasn't been at 50% yet, if you go back and look at Obama's entire eight years in office, he was under 50% almost 70% of the time. So this is, but you'll, you'll never hear the mainstream media talk about that at all. And I think Donald Trump's doing well in the, in the polls and starting to build because of the tax, the tax bill that passed. People are looking at his first year and going, that wasn't a bad year at all. You look back at how he's rolling, rolling back over 1,500 regulations, how he appointed conservative judges. The taxes are kicking in. People are starting to see some of those benefits in regards to the economy, wages, jobs going up. So I think the numbers are going to continue to improve. Uh, for Donald Trump, and I think it's going to help the uh, the Republicans in the 2018 midterms. Let's go ahead and take a look at this tweet from President Trump. Uh, he says, "Thank you to Rasmussen for the honest polling. We just hit 50 percent, which is higher than cheating Obama at the same time in his administration." <laughs> now you chuckle, but Ned, I, I do want to point this out that a lot of people that I hear from anyway, their issue isn't necessarily it doesn't have anything to do with policies or politics or what he's doing for this country. A lot of the issue is the way he talks, the way he tweets, things like that. So how long do you think it's going to be until people just accept it? Uh, this, is, this is actually a conversation I've had with the president um, on his Twitter handle and say, you know, I love 80 to 85 to 90 percent of what you do on Twitter. There's about 50, 10 to 15 percent that really give me pause and I think really uh, are not helpful. And so I think one of the things that I've, I want to see the president do mo uh, moving forward is just become a little bit more disciplined. I love what he does on Twitter. I want him to stay on Twitter. I love the fact that he is not your normal Washington, D.C. politician. It's going to be message discipline moving forward. And when he goes out and speaks, he's got that teleprompter. Stick to the teleprompter. When he wants to tweet out something he thinks might be a little inflammatory, take about five seconds to think about that. But again, it's just a little bit of message discipline moving forward because a lot of times he does step on his own message when, in fact, when people step back, and I've told people this, take away Trump's name from all of his accomplishments in year one, and they would go, that is a phenomenal year for a Republican president. You put Trump's name on it, and people go, oh, we're not so sure. So yeah. he steps on his own message sometime, work on that moving forward. And I tell you what, I think he can be even more successful. Right, because then those numbers make right. increase a lot. All right, yeah, you That's want right. to be tempered, be the outsider, but also be somewhat tempered in his delivery on, on what he says. All right, That's Ned right. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on this morning. We do appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, 37 minutes after the hour. President Trump not letting up on his attack against Amazon, the tech giant's rivals. Uh, our commander-in-chief just dined with. And how about this? No sweatpants in public. No eating at the same restaurant as a player. The <laughs> list doesn't stop there. A look inside the outrageous rulebook for NFL trees. And I honestly think Roseanne will be able to bridge the deep division we're going through. Hugs from Mobile. And Daniel says, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking your next episode gets, I don't know, 26 million viewers. You're making not only a great show right now, you're making history at the same time. And guys, ABC, of course, has a lot of confidence in the show as they already renewed it for a second season wow. after just one episode. Making a fortune. Yeah, that seriously. Means, yeah. All right. All right, Carly, the award for the most annoying person in sports media goes to... Yeah, not an award you really want to no. get, but a sports website, The Spun, says that its viewers voted ESPN's Jamil Hill the most annoying person in sports media. Yikes. But the real kicker here is that Hill actually responded, tweeting, <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> now, back in October, ESPN suspended her uh, for breaking their social media policy. That decision came after she called the president a white supremacist on Twitter. TW tweets, I watch sports channels for sports, not opinions, and especially not political opinions. So, Pierce Amen. rubbed a lot of people the wrong way over the past year. Amen. And uh, a fast food chain that doesn't want to serve 
Pot smokers, they're going to lose a heck of a lot of business. A Sonic restaurant in Mississippi uh, is warning customers not to smoke weed in their fast food line, suggesting they smoke weed before getting into their drive through line. Uh, the management posted a, a sign saying, attention, if you're smoking weed in the drive through you will not be served. Please show some common courtesy and smoke and air out oh, before okay. pulling up to order. <laughs> that air out. Out phrase really, really got me. So a lot of people are talking about this on social media. I think it's hilarious. And the uh, manager of this Nick says that it worked. No more smoking weed in the drive-through, which apparently is a thing. So it'll okay. serve you for space, but not if you're actually doing it right when you pull right. up. And you've got the cloud <laughs> pouring out of the Jeez. car. I'm not sure you should be smoking weed and driving. No, you probably should. Probably not. All right. That's probably the better advice. We're not going to dive into all that right now. Not the outrage over the Trump administration's citizenship.